Should anything go wrong? Cyanide. Oh. What flavor? <laughs> Orange or lemon? <laughs> Hi everyone, I'm Johnny, and today I'm reviewing a World War II movie from the Netherlands, Soldier of Orange. This is based on a novel with the same name, authored by real-life Dutch resistance fighter Eric Hasselhoff Rolsema. This is a highly acclaimed film, and was the most expensive Dutch movie ever on its release. Soldier of Orange is a long movie at 2 hours and 45 minutes, giving an intimate story of Eric's life before and during World War II. The movie is a very personal telling of Eric's life, it is of course a war movie, but also has themes relating to friendship, romance, nationalism, cultural identity, and how war shapes one's world. Eric Rulshema is played by Rutger Hauer, whose performance is authentic and believable, no doubt aided by the real Eric Rulshema, who directly helped with the production. One of the greatest feats of this movie is that it does not let any romance or friendship themes smother the war-focused storyline. In fact, the movie avoids many hero cliches and does well to highlight how most people don't care too much about war until it directly affects them. This includes Eric, who is an upper-class university student at the outbreak of the war. The Dutch never fought in World War I. They were neutral, and many in the Netherlands didn't predict World War II would affect them the way it did. The movie captures a broad view of Dutch attitudes during the war, which includes thousands of Dutch joining the Volunteer Legion of the Netherlands to fight alongside the Germans against the Soviet Union. The movie also highlights the National Socialist movement in the Netherlands, which existed before World War II, which naturally grew under German occupation. <laughs> Overall, the movie touches on many details that would be interesting to anyone wanting to know more about life under German occupation, from how the occupation affected academic life, to how collaborators were treated during and after the war. Of course, the main focus of the film remains the Dutch resistance, who were responsible for sabotage, hiding people including Jews, and assisting the Allies in the United Kingdom. Eric eventually was able to escape to Britain, where he would train to be an operative. He and his colleagues would be part of Operation Contact Holland, their goal, to establish links with resistance groups in the Netherlands, and then supporting and cooperating their activities. Eric would help insert operatives into the Netherlands by sea. There's one great scene in the movie where he smothers himself in Greece to help brave the cold water, which I think highlights a better reality of resistance work over any James Bond cliches. Field work is more frequently problem-solving small unexpected issues, not just shooting bad guys. Dutch resistance fighters were brave men, and those trying to organize them faced enormous obstacles. There were conflicting objectives amongst groups, a lack of standardized training, and an ever-present fear of infiltration by Dutch Nazi sympathizers. In 1942, Eric resigned from the Dutch secret service group called the Muse, and managed to join the RAF. He cheated on his eye exam to do so. Despite cheating to get in, he graduated from flight school in Canada as the best pilot in the training group. He would eventually fly to Havilland Mosquitoes, flying Pathfinder missions, guiding bombers to their targets. At the end of the war, Eric was highly decorated for both his work as a resistance fighter and pilot. He became personal assistant to Dutch Queen Wilhelmina and flew her back to the Netherlands from England in May of 1945. All right, I'm Johnny. Thanks for watching this review on Soldier of Orange. Do check it out. It's quite an excellent film. If you want to support the channel, give a like or subscribe, and we'll see you next time.